clinical examination of otolaryngology in a patient designed to meet the requirements for undergraduate students. In order to examine the ear, nose and throat of the patient, one needs a good light source and specialized instruments. These instruments are ear speculum, nasal speculum, tongue depressors, indirect laryngoscopy mirrors, posterior rhinoscopy mirrors, spirit lamp, Jobson horn ear probes, nasal and oral forceps, shigel speculum, tuning forks, 512 hertz is commonly used, autoscope with good illumination. The patient and the examiner are seated in a chair not more than 8 inches apart. Bull's eye lamp with a bulb of 70 to 100 watts and a plano convex lens is used which is placed 6 inches above and behind the left shoulder of the patient at the level of his or her ear. The head mirror consists of a concave mirror with focal length of 7 to 10 inches. Fix the mirror in the right eye so that part of the mirror touches the nose and both eyes should be open while examining the patient. Examination of external nose consists of examination of anterior and lateral profiles. It starts with palpation of the nose and this is carried out with to see the tenderness, crepitus and deformities. The vestibule is examined by lifting the tip of the nose. Patency test is done by placing a metallic tongue depressor on the vermian border of the upper lip. Now anterior rhinoscopy is done by using the thudicum's speculum. We hold it in the left hand, keeping the right hand free for other instrumentation. We introduce the speculum with the blades closed. Once inside the nose, gradually open the blades, avoiding discomfort to the patient. Now look at the roof, floor, lateral and medial walls of the nose and the septum. The inferior turbinate is well seen. Middle turbinate is seen with difficulty. Middle meatus is situated higher up, so tilt the head backwards at an angle of 45 degrees. If any growth or polyp is suspected, confirm by probe test. Sinus tenderness is examined by putting digital pressure on the supraorbital region, medial canthus region and below the malar prominence. In order to avoid inconvenience to the patient, Posterior rhinoscopy and indirect laryngoscopic examination can be done in the same sitting by using the same mirror. Now, indirect laryngoscopy is done with a plain mirror on a straight handle. Mirror is held like a pen in the right hand with the glass pointing downwards. We warm the mirror and test the temperature on the back of the hand. The patient is asked to stick out the tongue which is held with the middle finger and the thumb with index finger on the upper lip. The patient is then asked to breathe through the mouth. The mirror is introduced into the mouth to the uvula which is gently pushed back to get a view of the larynx and the pariform fossa. Then the patient is asked to say A ah, or E. Let's proceed to the examination of the throat. The throat consists of oral cavity and the oropharynx. In oral cavity, we see the following structures. Lips, teeth, gums, vestibule, parotid duct, opening, 
tongue, hard and soft palates, floor of the mouth with submandibular duct opening, retromolar trigon and cheeks. In oropharynx, we see the soft palate and its movement, uvula, anterior and posterior tonsillar pillars, the tonsils and gag reflex. Now we proceed to examine the ear. Examination of the ear is started with examination of the pinna. Examination of the pinna is done to see the shape, size and symmetry of the pinna, to see for any signs of inflammation, any ulcers, scars, swelling or sinuses in the pre or post auricular area. The tenderness is examined by putting pressure on the tragus, the mastoid tip and the scaphoid fossa. Pinna tenderness is examined by performing circumduction movement of the pinna. Examination of the external auditory meatus is done with an oral speculum. The pinna is pulled downwards, backwards and outwards in adults and it is pulled downwards and backwards to straighten the meatus in infants. Now after this, we use an otoscope with good illumination to see the tympanic membrane. The otoscope is held in the right hand for the right ear and the left hand for the left ear in a pen holding fashion. The little finger is kept like a fulcrum on the cheek of the patient. Through this, we see the position of the tympanic membrane, the color of the tympanic membrane, ossicles through the membrane or through the perforation if it is present. Then the mobility is seen by using a shigal's speculum. Middle ear can be examined through the perforation as well. After clinical evaluation of the ear, functional evaluation is done with a 512 Hz tuning fork. Each ear is tested separately. The better ear is tested first. We perform Rini's test. In this test, a vibrating tuning fork is placed first in front of the ear, then at the back of the ear on the mastoid tip. Then we ask the patient which vibration he or she hears better. Accordingly, we interpret. Then we perform Weber's test. In this test, a vibrating tuning fork is placed on the center of the forehead or the vertex or on the upper incisors and we ask the patient about the lateralization of vibration of the tuning fork. Now ABC test or absolute bone conduction test is done with occluding the ear of the patient and putting this vibrating tuning fork on the mastoid tip of the same ear of the patient. Once the patient stops hearing it, it is put on the mastoid tip of the examiner after occluding his external auditory canal too and accordingly we interpret the reading. Then after all this, we perform a test for nystagmus. Nystagmus is tested by asking the patient to fix his or her gaze on the tip of the examiner's finger, which is kept at about one feet apart and taken on both sides up to 30 degrees from the midline and also in upwards and downwards direction. The oscillating movement of the eyeball is noted and it is interpreted. We proceed to do the facial nerve examination of the patient. In this, we ask the patient to smile, to close his or her eyes, to frown and look upwards. Accordingly, we interpret and see which branches of the facial nerves are intact. ENT examination does not suffice without examining the neck of the patient. The examination of the neck can be done from the front and from behind 
with examiner standing at the back. On inspection, we look for any obvious neck masses or swellings. Examination should include palpation of thyroid gland from both sides. Carotid pulsations should also be appreciated. There should be thorough palpation of all the groups of cervical lymph nodes on both the sides of the neck. The supraclavicular node of the patient can be appreciated while the patient holds his or her breath in deep inspiration and the examiner insinuates his or her fingertips into the supraclavicular fossa. Besides regular and conventional ear, nose and throat examination, there are some advanced clinical examination tools. These instruments facilitate the ENT examination which cannot be appreciated by the conventional methods. The advanced tools for ENT examination are autoendoscopy, rigid nasopharyngoscopy, flexible laryngopharyngoscopy, telelaryngoscopy and video stroboscopy. Other diagnostic tools that can be used are audiometry, free field audiometry, play audiometry, impedance audiometry, brainstem evoked response audiometry or BERA, auto acoustic emission voice laboratory to study the voice dynamics and electroglottogram for vocal dynamics. This is how we complete the ENT examination in a specialized center.